Okay, so we are going to cover in this session like what is cron job, uh, what are the disadvantages of using cron job, what is QAPI, and what is QWorker, why is it useful, and how we can trigger a queue like using cron and manually. So uh, basically what is a cron? Like during your work for pro process, you must have come across a screen like this, where you just, you run a cron. Now, what is a cron? Cron is basically any scheduled job, for example, database maintenance or sending bulk emails. And you can set a time frame, like, you know, the cron runs once an hour, three hours, six hours. So any particular job that you want to run continuously on your website, you can use cron job. It is basically used to manage like short running tasks which, which are not uh, resource intensive. Like you, you are not using any third party resources. So in that case, you can use a cron job. So uh, using cron job comes with its own disadvantages. So one thing is like if for a module you have like three, four cron jobs and for one module your cron job fails, then your website, like all the cron jobs that you have created can fail. And usually in a cron, there is like no logging information. Like, like you cannot log or what went wrong, you cannot log that. And you cannot run two or three cron jobs simultaneously. So when I'm using cron word a lot, I can like in your module, So when you're creating a module, you have a hook um, where you can define like whatever work or whatever job you want to create in this hook. So this is basically a cron job. So due to all this uh, disadvantages, we, uh, we use QAPI. So QAPI is a better process. So you can uh, like, Think of Q as you know a system of like a number of items that you can go one by one. So Q worker has its uh, advantages, which is like you can set a time limit. You can have a time limit for each queue. For example, you create five queues. You can set up you know time limit for each one of them. Uh, so if one queue fails you can still run other queues inside your module. It's efficient as compared to cron because it can handle resource intensive tasks like if inside a queue you are using any third party resource. So this is more powerful. And also you can run multiple queues without interfering with other queues. And you can log information also like you can have some metadata and you can know like why an item failed. So uh, basically, we have some components of QAPI. One is Q interface. So any class that implements this Q interface, and when you create an object of this class, that is known as a Q. So Q basically works on database Q. So database Q works on first in, first out. So like when you have a set of items, it always pick up the first one, process it, and then release it. And also, like when you have items in a queue, you can just release one item and then come back to it later. So basically, queue, the role of queue object is to create item, claim them from the queue, process it, and then release it. So we have a module queue UI, which is a very, uh, powerful module and I use it uh, to see like what all the queues are there and what items are there in a queue. And you can also use this to you know delete like if you don't want to process items inside a queue you can just delete it. So here is a screenshot of a queue manager where you can just get a list of all the queue items and for example you want to see like what's inside one queue, you can just 
uh, view it or you can also release or delete it. So uh, these were the basic concept and now we are going to like go through a demo. So anyone has any questions to now? Yeah. If you uh, have a long running process with say a binary like SQLite, can you spin it up in a queue on a AWS pod? Will it keep that pod alive while it's processing? Uh, so I can, like, I, I have not worked on that setup, but uh, so you have access to this API ins, inside of Drupal module. Mm -hmm. So you can have your own queries or you can create items and you can add, you know, any number of items inside that queue. So I can just um, show inside the demo, like, how we can use this API. Mm -hmm. So uh, this particular example that uh, I have created is, so this is a small module, which prevents, uh, so when you insert a node, it adds, like if it's not published, so it adds that to this queue. The name of the queue is cron node publisher. So when a node is not published, so it just adds it to that particular queue. So I have just, um, So over here you can see that cron node publisher has at least eight items inside this queue. So I, I have a kind of a fundamental question I don't understand, which is so you have this on this Drupal site and it's showing you the queues you set up. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't reflect like all the Drupal still has all of its cron stuff that it's running, right? Yes, so yes. it's not it's not magically somehow part of the queue system, <laughs> like right, when you enable queues, right? It's no, no, no. So those <laughs> are these are like the queues that we are creating. Right. Drupal has its own cron that is running in the back end that has you know scheduled maintenance kind of things. That is a different. Uh, and if it if it fails, does it affect your queues? No, no, no. Okay. No. So this is like totally independent. This is the queue that you are creating for processing items. So basically, I created a queue over here which has eight items in it. So, and then we can also set a limit. So for example, I set a 10 seconds limit on it. So like each, items, each item has a 10 second limit. So this is basically, um, so if you can see my module structure, it's plugin queue worker. And inside queue worker, I have two queue workers, node publisher and manual one. So inside node, you have this metadata where you can tell that, you know, uh, you take 10 seconds and the title and the ID. So process item, uh, so basically uh, this is like an implementation of queue worker base, which is a class that you use. And then you have process item function, which is, um, so you're processing the particular item. So what I'm doing over here is noting, uh, I have an ID, node ID. I load it and then I publish it. So I have created a function where I just publish that particular node ID, which I have already added inside the queue. So if I go and Run the cron. So like now there are zero items and all the um, nodes that I added to the cron are published. So this is like how you can use the queue worker in cron. Do you have any questions? Okay. So another way of like this was how we are using cron another way is using like form we can create a form and then we can process the items in a queue so i'm going to add like couple of items
So now you can see like there are two items inside that particular queue worker. So now we are going to process this item uh, with the form, not using cron. We are not going to run the cron, but we are using a form to process these items. So inside the module, I created a form. And I uh, am using the other queue worker that I created, manual node publisher. And if I go to this URL, it will tell me like how many items it will process. So over here it stays that 13 items, like on submit of this form, it will process 13 items. And then inside this function, I have like created how it will work once the form is submitted. So it will get this crown worker that I created, manual node publisher, and it will loop through all the items that it has, like inside the while loop, and then it processes them. And once it gets processed, it's, dele it, it's deleting them from the crown. And if, if there is any exception, we can release that item from the queue worker. Demo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so basically it just uh, clears the items from here. I can take a look later what happened. Uh, so do, do you have any questions till now? Is, is the job still going to be triggered by cron as well, though, in this example? Or like a... So no, uh, once if like I created this and you remove the metadata for creating cron so uh, it, it will not get triggered by gotcha, um, gotcha. okay yeah <clears throat> although I suppose you could have a use case where you might want to run it manually and have cron run it and yeah you so it's it. like it's yeah. uh, and yeah. you can also use drush uh, so so these are some drush commands that you can use to um, create uh, to run and get the list of all the queues that have and delete them also. Uh, so the queue uh, manage module that you were talking about? Just yes. That, that is basically running Drush under the hood? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's like more uh, friendly user interface. Right. Gotcha. And then the, the code that you were showing, that, that's your custom module. Right. Yes, that, that, that is the custom module that I created using the API. Yep. So this is what this was the demonstration about how like I used Q and just created a, a example queues mm -hmm. for that. So you can also like go ahead and inspect these are the items that I have inside my queue. And you can also like if you can release them if it's like not required. You can just release or delete them. So uh, this was like an example of how, uh, like just a demonstration, but I can share a real scenario where I used Q API and how I used it. So this is Hoover's website, and they had like bunch of sections and uh, data on their main page and all the other pages. So uh, there was a case where you know we have to keep the speed of the website really fast. And on top of that, we could not do caching because they were like updating the website once a day or it was really fast process. So we come up with a process where <laughs> we generated static HTML files. Like we generated static HTML files twice a day when traffic was not like greater so that it get cached and the page is loading fast. So. For each page that, that was like fetching the content from view, we created a paragraph, a uh, JSON view paragraph. So each JSON view paragraph has a URL associated with it. So for example, this is a events page and it has a JSON view 
URL which is featured carousal events. So this view has content that is getting fetched from events like it's um, pulling in five featured events or 10 featured events. So what we did is we, um, we created a queue which sends requests to that URL and it creates a HTML file twice a day so that uh, twice a day the content gets updated and then in front end using JavaScript we just uh, loaded that particular content. So in that uh, how it helped us is like the file was cached and the speed of the page was fast. So we have like each for each page we have different queues. So like right now there are zero items, but for each page we created a different queue so that all the views that are inside it, it creates a, a static HTML file and then it loads on the page. So this is like the example of how we process item. So we sent, we entered the node ID. So to create, uh, to add it to the queue and then we set up a time like it has to run three times a day so that the content is always up to date. And then we are creating a static HTML file. Only on those times these files get updated so that the page is always uh, having new content. Yes, so you guys have any questions? Is it possible to, or it, and maybe this is another, like a contrib module, but is there a way to sort of chain um, cues to be dependent of each other, anything like that? Uh, no, they, they are like independent. They, uh, each queue has its own items and they are independent of I each see, other. I yeah. see. Could you make the, would there be any way to trigger one from the completion of another one though? Like, just trying to think about how. Yes. Oh, so just to answer your question. So you could have a queue that runs and then creates queue items for another queue. Uh -huh. And then that one then can run. So really like the results or some kind of context is being passed from one queue to the other. I see. Where they have certain kind of purposes. Right. So in theory, you could have chains right. um, that are like kind of passing along data, or something has to happen, and then this next thing that happens wow. and, and suit. Wow! But you would do that by making a queue create other queues. Exactly. Yeah. So like when it's working, it then says, "Okay, I'm done my thing. I'm going to create stuff for the next step, and then that'll run, and et cetera, et cetera." Yeah, you can use this uh, like to create an item. Mm -hmm. So this function helps you like creating an item. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can have like number of queues like for this project uh, inside the cron we created like number of um, queues over here. Mm -hmm. And we added like different content. In it. I wonder too like in practice um, like it, it's a fascinating idea giving someone like a button to like kick off a process like this, but could a, could the items in the queue be so vast that like you could bring the system to its knees by clicking that button? <laughs> and how would and how would we manage that, I guess? <laughs> so uh, good thing is uh, like this happened with us also because uh, the research only for Hoover had like one lakh items. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we can set a time limit. Like if it fails, you can just, uh, you know, get back to it again. Uh -huh. And in that case, it just keeps on adding the items and you still have like in your queue manager, you still, you can see it like what items are in there. Uh -huh. But it, it won't stop your system. So that was one of the reason why we went through this route so that 
the website is not slowed down because that was one of their requirement. Um, like Drupal 7 website was timing out again and again. So like, they wanted to Drupal 9 so that it doesn't time out. So yeah, that is why we go hold the static file route. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, just to chime in too. Um, so in theory, you could, instead of trying to process all the queue items, you could probably set a limit because you're kind of looping through and then processing them. So you could set like, you know, say you wanted to run it like overnight or something, you only want to process like a thousand things, mm -hmm. you could do that. Mm -hmm. um, there are also like other things like um, combining, like making your queue items a certain size. So like instead of having like, you know, each queue item is one thing, you can have those as like a hundred in each of those, and then you only run so many of those at a time. Um, I found that sometimes it does, depending on what you're doing, could, could have the strain on the memory. So, but the good news is you can actually like uh, temporarily increase the memory for a run. And then it'll, so like say you have a dresh command that's, that's prompting those queue runs. You can increase that memory, run stuff, and then it'll go back to what it was, um, just in case you need a little extra juice. What if you have unlimited resources and you want to be able to spin up new uh, images, say you're on Aquia Cloud Next, but you don't want those to go away? Will the Q API keep those resources running? Yeah, well, we have something similar on Pantheon with like a contra for the time now. And yeah. That's where we started leveraging the queue. Um, we've got this we've situation got where we're unzipping very large files, and what happens is, is on ACN, Aquia Cloud Next, it'll spin up a new pod, and it'll start using that as the resource in the background, but then it doesn't recognize that there's a process happening because they only recognize like Apache processes mm -hmm. and the binary will fail and then the media entity that's getting updated you can't there's no like that whole pod that was processing that is went away mm -hmm. so we want to keep it alive yeah I mean uh, we use this Q API because cron was not uh, it was timing out a lot and like this particular website has like so many researches and uh, events so we wanted to like process each item and even the views like the Drupal views were when we are calling them on a page it, it was rendering the play, page slow because it's like processing those items mm -hmm. so that's why we went to the route of creating static files and we wanted them to be updated because they are like regularly updating the content like new events are coming or new resources on home page are coming so that's why we went to this route the Q API. I was also curious uh, did you guys I, I like the the um, the, new, uh, the admin module that yeah. you have for yeah. um, and did you did you guys create that because like uh, there's no a, there's a other con super con I, I forget something ultimate yeah ultimate con and yeah. all these other things that that will track a lot of that stuff, but I found it really kind of buggy and really kind of... Yeah, so QUI uh, is a contributed piece. module that I found, like, when I I'm tr I was trying to access the items inside a queue. So, yeah, it, it's a really good module. It helped a lot, like, to even to view the items. And I have, like, I was not able to add the metadata, but it's also possible to add some metadata in each item. Like, you can know if, if you want to process this item or... Mm -hmm. And even, like... Uh, uh, this module really helped us because we were using feed feed module we were so for Hoover there were like ten of thousands of feeds so even like if I so that feed module is also using um, Q worker so you can just see like all the items and like right now, it, it's 800 items that's that are still not able that it's still not able to process because it's like too much data inside the feed. So yeah, this this also helped in like you know visualizing what how much content is still left and like if we re need to run the cron on odd hours just to you know process these items. And I 
saw something about batch API. Were you guys using that as well? No, we were not using no, batch right? API. Yeah, no. we, uh, because we were accessing like each node, so we didn't needed the batch API. Yeah. Well, yeah, we created paragraphs, and then like inside the paragraph, we accessed the URL, sent the request, created the static files, like, and then loaded on the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like at least uh, on each page, two or three sections are rendering like that nice. through through that static HTML file. And we use this uh, on all the pages. Yeah, so this was the first time I was giving the session, so <laughs> thank you for joining. <laughs> I, I actually, uh, earlier I said like I want to give a session for 20 minutes, but they extended it to 45, so I, I knew it will wrap up by 20 minutes. I <laughs> just wanted to show the module. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.